Hello Grade 11 Life Sciences students and curious minds everywhere. Welcome back to our exciting series on animal nutrition. In today's video, we're kicking things off with a look at two very important foundations of nutrition dentition in animals and an overview of the human digestive system. Let's begin with something we all use every day, teeth. Different animals eat different types of food and their teeth have evolved to suit their diets. Herbivores like cows, sheep and giraffes are plant eaters. Their teeth are adapted for grinding. They have broad, flat molars and large incisors for cutting vegetation, did you know? Most herbivores have a gap called a diastema between their incisors and molars to help them manipulate plant material with their tongue. Carnivores, like lions and dogs, are meat eaters. They need to tear flesh so they have sharp canines for piercing and killing prey, carnassial teeth for shearing meat, less emphasis on grinding, more on cutting and slicing. Omnivores, like humans and bears, eat both plants and animals. Their teeth are a combination of all the above, incisors to cut, canines to tear, molars and premolars to grind. Now let's zoom into the human body and look at the macrostructure of our alimentary canals. Animal nutrition. The human digestive system includes the alimentary canal. That's the long muscular tube from your mouth to your anus, as well as accessory organs like the liver and pancreas that help in digestion. Mechanical digestion is the physical breakdown of food into smaller pieces, and it includes mastication or chewing is done by the teeth and tongue. Then, bolus formation occurs as the chewed food forms a ball and moves to the esophagus. Churning happens when muscles in the stomach wall mix food with digestive juices. And finally, peristalsis involves rhythmic muscle contractions that push food along the digestive tract. Chemical digestion breaks down large insoluble molecules into small soluble molecules using enzymes. These enzymes are produced in various organs like the mouth, stomach, pancreas, and small intestine. Once digestion is complete, the small molecules are absorbed through the villi of the small intestine. Glucose, amino acids, water, vitamins, and minerals enter blood capillaries, while fatty acids and glycerol enter lymph vessels. Absorbed nutrients go to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. Glucose is stored as glycogen, amino acids may be deaminated, and the remaining nutrients enter the bloodstream to reach body cells. This is called assimilation. Undigested material moves to the colon where water and minerals are absorbed, the rest is stored in the rectum and excreted as feces through the anus. That's the full journey of food in your body. Wonder how your body handles sugar highs and lows? Let's dive into the science. Now let's explore how the body keeps blood sugar levels balanced through a process called homeostatic control. Two important hormones are involved, insulin and glucagon, both secreted by the pancreas. After eating, blood glucose levels rise. In response, the pancreas releases insulin. Insulin triggers the liver and muscles to convert excess glucose into glycogen and body cells absorb glucose for energy. When you haven't eaten for a while and glucose drops, the pancreas releases glucagon. Glucagon tells the liver to break glycogen back into glucose, releasing it into the blood. This process is regulated by negative feedback, ensuring your body maintains a stable internal environment. If the pancreas cannot produce insulin, it leads to a condition called diabetes mellitus. Glucose builds up in the blood, cells can't absorb it efficiently, and symptoms include thirst, fatigue, and frequent urination. Recap time. Digestion breaks food down, absorption puts nutrients into the blood, assimilation uses these nutrients. Blood sugar is controlled by insulin and glucagon, a process called homeostasis, like subscribe and hit the bell for more caps-aligned life sciences lessons.